Dear brother and sister, the Saints Christ, welcome to a new uh, episode or uh, I would say a new series, just like two uh, episodes, hopefully yes, I finish it in two, about the experience of new births, experience of new births or being baptized by the Holy Spirit, all right? Uh, I'll split it into two episodes, one to cover what is baptism according to the book of Didache, and uh, next episode will be about uh, good deeds and the uh, rebirth, the experience of rebirth. Before I start this episode, just I would like uh, to tell you that uh, over the last six weeks, praise the Lord, the uh, the fruit of the uh, f of many people they come to Christ through the channel, the YouTube channel is is good. There is the, uh, a great testimony I would like to share it with you without mentioning the name of the person, uh, but it's really a good one. He is a young man, obviously, if, uh, and he actually he put some stuff like on uh, on the YouTube channel itself. Anyway, young man, he has no relationship with God, or any, nothing, not, nothing. Even he didn't know that there is something called the Protestant, and uh, he's a, obviously he's an Orthodox. Anyway, so somehow the Holy Spirit just moved him to go to church. Not bad. Uh, then when he went there and uh, he found so many stuff outside the Bible. Then he uh, went and asked the priest why there is so much stuff outside the Bible. Why don't we just go by the Bible? Of course, if you say if you say something like that, they might think, oh, you are a Protestant. <laughs> he didn't know even that there is something called the Protestant. He had no relationship. At, at, like, he was just like enjoying his, uh, his youth years. Okay. Uh, but he was not convinced with this answer. No. He felt actually it's a shameful answer to say that the Bible doesn't have everything. Then he went out and he spoke to one of his friends like about what happened. And his friend actually referred him to the channel. And he started like watching. And now he is, he, he said he is so hungry and thirsty to the word of God. And actually he's spending time and investing time in reading the Holy Scriptures. And yes, praise the Lord uh, for such a thing. This is actually uh, the work of the Holy Spirit in people and in the channel. So I wish during those two episodes, you will have the same experience. Don't swallow anything that they tell you those guys. It, it's... They actually, they are against the word of God when they say the Bible doesn't have everything. I understand you can put plenty of stuff, but the Holy, the Holy Spirit moved the writers of, or the authors of, both the Old and the New Testament, to write, to record what is more than enough for us to know to lead us into salvation. All right? So let's start now. We know that rebirth or the birth from above is very vital, otherwise we will not go to, uh, uh, to heaven at all. I did a survey, by the way, for people who just crossed over from either background of religion or uh, a denomination, uh, from about 10 different countries around the world, by the way, from men and women, old and young. So let's read like two verses that I will not comment on them, and that, but they are very vital, especially for the uh, tradition people. Both of them in the book of John chapter 3, verses 3 and verse 5. Jesus answered and said to him, to Nicodemus, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. All right. Uh, now, what Jesus is talking here, not about whatever called sacrament of baptism. Now, he's talking about the birth of, from high, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the word water here doesn't mean really water. It means actually the preaching, the word of God. Anyway, if I start this way, now I will we'll keep like fighting back and forth with verses from here and there. They have only those two verses, but some other verses like to support, like actually birth from uh, spirit is, is known, but also birth from water means from preaching the word of God. But anyway, I will not go this way. 
All right, no matter, and, and, and there are two facts now here. Uh, according to these, those two verses, no one will enter the kingdom of heaven unless being born again. Of course, it should be an adult person, like a child, he, he doesn't know anything at all. So these guys will go straight away to heaven. Also, including children born for in different religion families. What about people even they, they, they like kids, like they die uh, during miscarriage? Right, so we have to trust the wisdom and the fairness and justice of God. Second thing, traditional people they made like a, uh, a recipe about the out of these verses. They said water and spirit. So what happens is they bring water, they pray on it to make sure that uh, the devil work is out of the water and no devil in the water. Believe me, and then you put some iron in it which was invented in the fourth century not before that and now they say oh now this is the water and this is the spirit and then he, they dip you when you are 40 days or 80 days if you're a girl into the water and say now you got the 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 the, the, the you are reborn or you are born again and now you are actually uh, convinced that born again why you are not and you are at risk by the way Okay, so uh, I would like to tackle today with you away from the Bible, not to fight with the with the um, uh, verses. There is a manual, by the way. There is a manual in which we can see how to baptize. This manual, written by the the, the traditional people, they say they, it is by the apostles themselves in the very first century, could be late first century, early second century. This book is called the Daki or the Dachi. All right, you can download it from the internet for free. It is a very small book. Okay, this book has 16 topics or handling uh, 16 topics. Uh, we will read two of them. We will read the baptism one, but before the baptism one, I will read the one regarding the breaking of the bread or the communion, if you like to call it this way. So what does it say about the communion or breaking of the bread, which is item nine. But as touching the Eucharistic Thanksgiving, he did not say the sacrament, but forget it now. Thus you give thanks. How do you give thanks? First, as regard this, the cup, so what? what would you say on the cup like how do you how do you bless or pray on the cup we give you thanks O our father for the holy vine of your son david which you made it known unto us through your son jesus for yours is the glory forever and ever okay so this is what you when you get the the, the, the wine in the cup this is what you say then as regarding the broken bread so when you get the bread what you what you what would you say we give you thanks O our father for the life and the knowledge which you did make known to us through your son jesus thine is the whole is the glory forever and ever as this broken bread was scattered upon the mountains and being gathered together became one so may thy church like the church which is the believers be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom for thine is the glory and the power through jesus christ forever and ever so this means what they put the catalog how do you bless how do you pray on the cup and the bread good what about the baptism okay let's see what did they put in this manual about the baptism what shall we do with the baptism it says the following is item seven but concerning baptism first of all he's talking to everyone he did not say to Allah as uh, the, the the baptism uh, you the priest do this and that thus shall you baptize okay having first recited all these things which like was some direct like uh, direction and instructions how to manage some stuff he said baptize in the name of the father and the son and of the holy spirit in living which is running water note uh, not in a font 
in the church as according to the Bible, the church is the believers, not a building. So there was no specific place for baptizing. All right. So this is uh, what I said. That, that was just explanation. So, so do what? I, what did they say about baptizing? When you baptize, baptize in running water. But if you has not living water, then baptize in other water. And if you are not able to call in cold, then in warm. But if you have neither, then pour water on the head thrice, like three times, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. But before the baptism, let him that, bap that baptizes. It's an absolute. So it didn't say, let the priest to baptize. No, it even says, that him, him that baptizes. What does it mean? That him he baptizes. That whoever to baptize. All right? Which, and of course, but it will be a believer. And him that is baptized, fast. And any others, like of the believers, also who are able, that would like to, like to, to share this with the person that's going to be baptized or the new believer. And you shall order him that is baptized to fast a day or two before before baptism. Now, my my comments on this. Where is the prayer on the water? Wow, nothing. You know, now we know why I read the communion one, because it has a prayer, what would you say? But in this, it didn't say, Yes, the bring water and pray, like pray on the water and put oil in it. And this is what you say on the water. Nothing. All right. So I wanted now to tell you, and instead of fighting with the verses of the Bible, now this is the manual. This is what, according to what you say, this is how to baptize. Full stop. If you say this is, now you say the Bible is not enough and we think this is extra. Okay, this is extra. But where is, where is the, like uh, getting like water and pray on the water to make sure that there is no charming uh, whatever like it, it is definitely like like if you're having like a voodoo uh, that you recite on the water and after finishing baptizing you tell the holy spirit to go back and that water comes back to its nature uh, like what if the devil is there come back again to uh, into the water anyway so what is the prayer on the water? There is nothing. This means what you're doing is not apostolic and also, by the way, is not biblical. Number two, what about the sacrament of my own? Because it talked about now the person just baptized in water. What is the spirit? We know that next week. Huh? When, when, you, when are you born by the Holy Spirit or baptized by the Holy Spirit? Because actually now it says on the, the water. You know when? When the person actually submits his or her life to Christ, but we'll come to this in detail in the next one, next next episode. So, what about the baptism? Uh, about what about uh, uh, the sacrament of my own? Nothing there, uh, because uh, the word my own, by the way, by the way, itself just just came in the fourth century. Number three, it is obvious in the book of the Daki. I had a full episode about this, by the way. There is no priesthood and there's no sacraments because it didn't mention them as a sacrament at all, whether the uh, communion or Eucharistia or whatever you would like to, uh, breaking the bread, whatever you would like to call, and the baptism, they didn't mention sacrament and didn't mention that a priest would do this job. All right? Number four, what about baptizing the kids? No kids, because if there were kids, it might say the parents of the kids to fast in a, like for their, their, their kids. All right? This is not, not there. By the way, baptizing kids only came into the church, unfortunately, by St. Augustine. St. Augustine, who came with the idea of the sin of Adam, and he said, everyone is born already having the sin of Adam as if it is in his luck genetics or DNA and accordingly everyone that is human he already at least got this sin and because you have it unless it is forgiven by the baptism which of course not uh, he will not go to heaven what about people like they die in miscarriaging 
or born like and and they, and, and died as little kids like uh, under age the, the the age of like knowing to the discern the good from the bad it's all man made dear brother and sister my objective out of all what i presented today so far is not to go to this argument about verses here and there i'm reading your your manual all right see if we say uh you know sometimes there like sometimes the, the 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 country puts some laws and now there is after that they put like procedures how to apply this law so if you say it is in the bible as a law yes whoever the, does not like being baptized or born uh, from above will not see the like uh, the kingdom of heaven now we can see this the catalog it explains it how to do it all right so the person like uh, for example to fast one day or two days before that and uh, you take him to like uh, running water if not any water if it is cold or wood or whatever and they, if there is not enough water you just pour, pour the, on the head in the name of the father and the son the holy spirit and that is that is it all right so this is the manual all right so um, i don't understand the law now go to the manual like it, it simplifies the law all right so what is it nothing so what compare this what's happening now it's all man-made stuff right okay next one so this is what my my first that was my first target number th second one i'm taking the manual that to make it easy now they can easily tell you the Bible doesn't have every, everything. Uh, what about the manual? Uh, after the manual, the other manual. And after the other, another manual. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. You are actually ashamed to be called the Christians if you say the Bible doesn't have everything. And even the additional books, it's books after books after books, as much on the top of the Bible. And actually they have plenty of contradictions. Because actually it is man-made. It is not by apostles. But I'm talking as what they believe in. They say this apostolic. Okay, here we go. So this is the manual. This is the first thing. They said this is the first book in, uh, after the Bible as was given by the apostles as teachings. All right. This is the teachings or of the apostles. So this is the, the manual. How to baptize. How to break the bread. All right. And it has also... Uh, it's also interesting stuff about even how to uh, so how to behave and uh, how to give and all that stuff. All right, this means what? According to Daki, any believer can baptize any other one that coming to be a believer after be after being like a disciple. All right, exactly like uh, Philip, the deacon in the book of Acts, Acts chapter eight. When, for example, he baptized the Enoch, after he explained to him some stuff about Jesus, and he, even the Enoch asked, the, if "There is water. Is there any uh, anything to forbid not to get baptized?" Or no, if you believe in from your heart that Jesus is the the Savior, the Son of God, then you could be baptized. He said, "This I believe." Then he asked to stop the chariot. They went to the water. He baptized him, and that was it. Finished. All right. Of course, they will tell you, ah, uh, not everything uh, is mentioned by what a shame. And also, by the way, it's the same like Hananias in the book of Acts chapter 9, when he baptized uh, Saul, who came St. Paul after that. All right. So when they say nothing, uh, the Bible doesn't have everything. It's a shame to they say that. And just they would like to open the door for anything to be thrown there. Everything, anything now we can put there. I had uh, like an argument with uh, a Catholic lady uh, regarding St. Mary. And the Catholic actually they admitted the uh, ascension or taking up of uh, the, the body of St. Mary into heaven. And even they said she didn't die. Only in 1950, like 20th century. When it's like 20th century when actually came to the church. Now the, she, she said, those people have the authority of uh, binding and loosening and they can do anything and uh, also God could reveal to the Pope anything at any time as like uh, an addition to the Bible so if he says that then it is, it is there 
So they might tell you any of this, of this stuff, on these options. The Bible doesn't have everything. We have the power to bind and loosen everything. And whatever we do here, it will be like there. So you can do the, their own religion. Why not? You can add to it. You can chop this here. You can whatever you would like to do. And uh, yes, uh, it's a revelation in, in Catholic uh, re religion. Religion. It's a revelation to the Pope. So no problem. Okay, this is how it is. Uh, according to the Didache, uh, there is no like prayer on the water, the, like in the beginning, or there is no Myron, there is no uh, uh, children uh, baptism. Uh, we are the crossover, or we call we call ourselves the crossers or the crossover people. From background, whether it could be a religion like Islam or from a denomination, who we are, all right? Why we are called this way? We were born in in, in, in families like in like anyone, and the, there is like a myth that if you were born in a Christian family or a, a Christian, it is Orthodox and you are a cross Orthodox. How come? I didn't choose anything or Muslim, but that is the culture. But we were one day. Like the, 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 the young man that I spoke about his testimony at the beginning of the episode, we were moved like to examine what we practice and from where it did it come. And actually it is not in the Bible and then we discovered it's all man-made. And we found it is not biblical and absolutely it has plenty of myths, contradictions and all that stuff. All right, next episode, God willing, if it doesn't come, we'll talk about good deeds and its role in the new birth. Good deed and its role in new birth. If you haven't like, experienced the new birth, new birth, this uh, title will be confusing to you. That's why I'm going to clarify, clarify this next episode. But if you already crossed, definitely you know what I'm talking about. So I'll, to prepare yourself for the next episode, I will put some questions for you that you might start like try to think all right uh, what the number one what do you think how your personal sins are forgiven is it by the sacrifice of Lord Jesus Christ on the cross only or you need also to do good works for that and by the way if you think it is good way you have to put the good works as well so you can it find out what percentage like 50 50 someone by the way one day told me she crossed already she thought it's 50-50, but you don't know what is your 50. Number two, if your good deeds mm -hmm. has a, a role in your, uh, to be forgiven for your own sins, all right? What are those good deeds that require for me to do, all right? Uh, mostly might say like praying, fasting, uh, communion, uh, repentance, uh, giving alms, okay, that's good, good. Now examine this when you do it. Is it really perfect thing that can actually have the power to forgive your sins? Like for example, if take one example. Like for example, let's say prayer. Are you really praying with your own heart, all your mind, and con and pro like seriously and uh, uh, continually, or like? Uh, at least you pray the seven prayers of that beer, all right? Can you do this? If not, this means your work actually is not perfect. So I think it will uh, have the power to forgive your sins. The same with alm almsgiving. Do you really give with a cheerful heart? Are you very honest, at least with the, with, with the tithes? And by the way, the Bible doesn't need, need doesn't really say the tithes, but also, what about giving from your need? Because if you got 10 million and you give 1 million, you still got 9 million, it's plenty of money. But if someone got only like $10,000, some people even uh, per month, they don't get even $5,000. They can't even survive with $5,000. So in dollars, uh, uh, it's uh, Egyptian pounds, sorry. They can't survive with that. So 10% of 5,000 is so much compared to 10 like for the person, compared to 10,000 to 10 million, if you give 1 million, you got 9, still plenty. But if you got like 500 guinea, like Egyptian pounds, or 5,000, assume 5,000, although this big 5,000, and you give like uh, 500 out of it, even the 500 is not good enough for your own very basic needs nowadays. 
So, uh, the, you, you understand what I'm saying? So, do you give actually from your own luck over because I'm very rich or you give from your, the, the, your real needs, all right? So, it looks like even your good deeds are not really good deeds. Like the word good would be too good to say about it is good. All right? So do you think it will? Number uh, four. If you find the... Uh, if, you, if you realize, after I explain this, that your good deeds are not really good enough or, or, or should not be labeled as good, what's your plan now? Last one, number five. Uh, can I suggest for you like, to resolve this dilemma or this problem? Can you read the story of Cornelius in the book of Acts chapter 10 and the story of the prodigal son in the book of Luke chapter 15 and see if it will give you some new venues about how your sins could be forgiven. All right. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. Share the videos, share the news about the video, about the videos and the channel with others could be a blessing for them. Give the video a like if you think it's worth it. And unless the Lord comes, we'll meet again in another episode. May the Lord bless you all. Salam al-Masih.